In version 15.1 of Eclipse, we gain access to a new tool in external beam planning known as visual scripting. In this video, we'll discuss some of the concepts behind visual scripting and go through some demos of how to use visual scripting to extract data from patient plans. First, what is visual scripting? Visual scripting allows for users to create custom scripts that can pull information from their patient plans. Because of the graphical programming interface that allows the users to drag and drop different parts of the script, it requires no programming knowledge previously needed to create these scripts. For information and documentation about the visual scripting tool, uh, please take a look at the Eclipse Scripting API reference guide, where the most current version has a visual scripting section on chapter seven. Let's take a look at the visual scripting user interface. Here we see the visual scripting workbench, which is divided up into separate areas that contain different responsibilities for building the script. In the center, we see the most noticeable piece is the canvas where we can drag and drop the pieces to our script and organize our script in a way to get the information we're looking for. On the left side, we have a few different sections, the first being the context items. Context items contain the information that you want to know about your patient plan or structure set. Underneath the context items, we have a set of flow controls. Flow controls are going to modify the way that in which we access this data or filter data from the context items before we send the data to be viewed. At the very bottom, we've ha we have action packs. Action packs are going to be functions that are going to return different sets of data. We'll take a look at action packs when we go through the demonstrations. On the right hand side of the screen, we have what's called the flow controls. Flow controls will tell the user what can and cannot be connected from the current control that they have accessed in the canvas. At the top, we have the menu. The menu will allow us to open previously built scripts, save the scripts that we're working with currently, and run the scripts within Eclipse. Some of the currently available features in visual scripting are worth going over. In visual scripting, we can extract, view, and export data that's currently available with the Eclipse scripting API. This is going to be done through what's called the script context in the Eclipse scripting API, but we have shortcut context items in visual scripting to make this a little bit easier. This data can then be sent to a table to organize the data or to a view to show the data to the user. We can also create reports in visual scripting. To create the reports, we will need the begin report action pack, the to report action pack, and the end report action pack. With creating reports, we can also embed things like images, PDFs, and screenshots. This can be extremely useful in creating dynamic reports. We can also extract DVH metrics. Currently, there are action packs available to calculate standard DVH metrics, also to calculate user customizable DVH metrics. We'll take a look at both of these during the demonstrations as well. Visual scripting can also be extended by programmers. In the Visual Script Wizard for version 15.1, a new type of script has been added called the Visual Scripting Action Pack. When creating a Visual Scripting Action Pack, a template of an action pack will be created that can be modified by the programmer. To demonstrate some of the features of Visual Scripting, we have opened a patient plan here, and we're going to create a few different types of Visual Scripts that can help us gain access to information about our patient. To get to the Visual Scripting Workspace, I can go to the Tools menu and choose Visual Scripting, and the Visual Scripting Workbench will appear. From the Visual Scripting Workbench, I can see all of the items in the user interface that I was currently discussing on previous slides. I'm gonna actually look a little bit more at the action packs, and I'm gonna bring in first this Calculate DVH action pack. When I select the Calculate DVH action pack, you can see the flow control window is telling me what I can connect to the Calculate DVH. So it can either drag in the context item manually or use the flow control to determine what I want to bring in and it'll create the connection for me. So here I'll click on structure set and the connections made for me. But if I wanted to bring the context item in myself, I would just drag and connect the two together. If the connection is invalid, it will actually give an orange line showing that the connection is invalid. Uh, blue lines mean that the connection is a, a valid connection. I also need to find a way to view this information. Using the flow controls, I can see that I can view the information as a report. I can send it to something like to view. So let's do that one because that's the easiest one to see. So I'll click on the menu item, save and execute in Eclipse and give this a name, example script. And we'll see that the to view shows us the DVH metrics in a temporary window. 
In this temporary window, we can see some standard DVH metrics such as the volume of the structure, the min, max, and mean doses for each of the structures in the plan. We can do a little bit more with the visual scripting interface though. Say for instance, I wanted to, instead of getting the calculate DVH method for all of the structures, I wanted to be able to filter some of the structures out. So I'll select all of the structures inside of the structure set using the properties of the structure set context item. I'll drag in the filter flow control. And when I connect the structure set, so let me get this connected to the flow control, the flow control, the filter can now see all of the properties that I can use to filter the structures. And so here I can choose that I want to filter the structures based on the DICOM type property. And I'll choose that the DICOM type equals PTV. So now let's run this script again. And we don't have to rename it because it's still using the example script name. And now we can see only structures that have the DICOM type PTV show up on our structure list. We can also extend these DVH metrics a little bit further. So for instance, instead of only looking at the DICOM type PTV structures that are in the single plan, I can actually look at all the plans in the course. So first, let me remove the plan setup context item. I'll drag in the course context item and I'll use the properties of the course context item to show me all of the plan setups that are in the currently selected course. So now I have all the plans that are in the currently selected course. I can connect that to the calculate DVH and you see that the connection is valid there as well. Here I can go to the menu, save and execute an eclipse. And we'll see now we're getting the DVH metrics for each of the structures that has a DICOM type PTV in all of the different plans that we currently have in course one. If we wanted to get some custom DVH metrics though, we can do that with a different action pack. So let me remove the calculate DVH action pack. Instead, this time we're going to use the calculate DVH metrics action pack, which I already know takes the plan setup context item. I'll use the flow controls to connect that to the calculate DVH metrics and clicking on the I in the center of the calculate DVH metrics action pack allows me to add my DVH metrics. So for the first one, I'll choose a structure ID of bladder. I'll put in a DVH metric that says that I'm looking at the dose that 30% of the volume receives, and I want that dose to be displayed in absolute dose units of centigrade. I'll say that for my goal, the dose should be less than 4,500 centigrade, but it must be less than 50 gray, and I'll give it a priority of one. It may be important to note that the goal, must, and priority are to be manually validated by the user as of right now. The script is not going to evaluate based on this goal must column in the priority, but instead it's something that the user can look at and see the achieved dose and make sure that it's less than the, than the goals that they have set for the plan. I'll put another DVH metric in here for the rectum. I'm going to look at the volume that receives 100% of the dose, and I want that volume to be uh, displayed in percentage. I'll also take a look at the PTV for this plan, uh, and I want to know the dose that 95% of the volume receives, and that should be greater than 95%. And we don't need units in the goal and the must column. Okay, so now that I have my DVH metrics, I'll send those to view as well. And let me get rid of these extra ones here. I'll go to menu, save and execute an eclipse. And now we can see the custom DVH metrics that we've created. So no longer do we just need min, max, and mean doses. We can get whatever types of doses or volumes that we require for our reporting purposes. So let's open up the visual scripting interface again, and we'll, do, we'll build some reports. So there's a couple of different ways we can build reports. One is by using visual scripting to give you all of the information you need in the report. So I'll go to the menu item and choose new script and I'll bring in first the patient context item. And if I look on my flow controls, I can see that one of the things that the patient can be connected to is this two table action pack. In the two table action pack, I can click to add different properties and it will put these in a table. So let's say for instance, I wanted the patient name. I wanted the patient hospital ID. So where is that patient? What hospital is that patient located at? I want the patient date of birth, and let's get the patient sex as well. And I can name these columns, something like full name, hospital, 
and they don't have to match exactly. So I can do uh, DOB for date of birth and maybe gender for the patient's sex. And I want to send this to a report, but to send it to a report, you'll notice that the to report action pack has two different inputs because it needs to be connected to either a begin report in the beginning or another to report uh, to continue the flow of the report. So we'll see the dark blue lines throughout our script are going to continue the building of this report. So let's get some plan setup items. I'll send that to a table as well. And we also have this add defaults button if you don't know which properties to add immediately and you can modify from the defaults. So I'm happy with these defaults and I'll use that as a table. And then I'm going to send this table to the report as well, where the two report still has two inputs so I can connect to the report. And now you can see where the dark blue lines are starting to show me the flow of that report. I also want some information about the fields. So I'll pull in the plan setup context item and I'll grab the beams property, which is going to be all of the fields. And I'll add the defaults for the fields as well. We can also add a custom name to our table as well. So at the top of the table, what do we want to see? And I'll put in field information and we'll see at the top of this table, we see the field information text describing the table. I'll connect this to another two report and we'll connect a couple more things. Maybe we still want to get our DVH metrics that we were getting before. So I need the plan setup context item and the structure set context item. And now I can go to the calculate DVH method. And those will be the standard DVH metrics. I'll send those to a report. And then lastly, uh, before we end the report, I can embed a couple of screenshots. So I'll click on embed screenshot a couple of times. And lastly, end the report. So when I run this report, I'm going to need to save it with another script, visual script name. So I'll call this report demo. And when the report runs, the first thing it's going to ask me to do is in the begin report action pack, it asks you to select where you want to save the report. Now it's asking me where I want to capture these screenshots. So I can set up my view to set to save the screenshot first. It doesn't have to be set up ahead of time. So maybe I'll move my viewing planes to the global dose max if that's where my screenshots are taken. I can also modify some other parts of the view, maybe turning off the color wash so I can see the isodose lines and also maybe zooming in a little bit on the patient so we can see some of the doses where the hotspot is relative to the patient. So now that I've got my screenshot ready, all I have to do is click capture. If I'm happy with the screenshot, I can click next. And now I'm ready for my second screenshot. For the second screenshot, I'll actually take a screenshot of the DVH window. So I'll capture that. And now the report is being built and saved to the desktop and we should see the report pop up here. So there's our patient table, our plan setup table that has the plan setup ID as the name of the table. If we scroll down to the second page, we have our field information table. So notice that has our custom title for the table. And you can see that the default settings for the field had a lot of different information in it. And if we scroll down even further, we can see the DVH metrics action pack. And then we can see the two screenshots, the first screenshot being of the patient anatomy and the second screenshot being of the DVH view. So that's a pretty good bit of information in our report, but maybe the report doesn't have everything that we want in it. So first, one of the ways that we can use visual scripting is to simply extend the capabilities that we currently have with reporting. So let's say that I use the full report commonly in my plan write-ups. So I'll get the full report. I'll print this to a PDF. And one of the things that I don't like about the full report is that I don't have any screenshots in this full report. But we can fix that with visual scripting. So let's go back to the visual scripting interface. I'll start with a blank setup. And this time I'll go from begin report. And all I need to do is embed a PDF, embed a couple of screenshots, and end the report. Pretty simple visual script. I'll save this. And in this way, I can add screenshots to my full report without having to use any external PDF tools. So again, it's going to ask me, where do I want to save the report? It's asking me which PDF I want to embed in my new report. 
And now I'm going to take the screenshots again. So I'll take the screenshots of where my global dose maximum is, and I'll take a second screenshot of the DVH window. And now when the report appears, when the report appears, you can see that the report has my embedded screenshots as well as an embedded copy of the full report. Here we've seen just a few of the capabilities of the visual scripting tool available in version 15.1 of Eclipse. We should expect the visual scripting tool to become more robust as Varian developers and programmers within our community continue to build action packs to meet their reporting needs. Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit about visual scripting.